Once again we find ourselves in the old tamarack sauna after a long day of grouse hunting in the Wisconsin wilds. After a day like today, it sure is nice to relax and sip some scotch, throw water on the hot rocks, and talk grouse hunting with one's fellow grouse hunters. I agree. One thing our main camp lacks is a good sauna. Yes, but it is true as KG says that Maine has other advantages to offer. Is that right? Such as what? Well, our main camps over the years have been very memorable. We have had some good times at Mackinac camps. That is very true. I for one love Maine, and I can never forget the eerie night sounds of the Maine wilderness. So aptly described by Henry David Thoreau. Whatever. The only night sounds I can seem to remember are the sounds of either Kleinman or Joshua, I can't remember which, retching up their single malt in the bushes around the raging Mackinac campfire. Actually, it seems to me I can remember both Kleinman and Winchell, both making those night noises, at various times. Demon rum is certainly no match for demon scotch, in my humble opinion. Another night noise I remember was the sound of KG on safari one night, hunting for a big game house mouse in the Mackinac kitchen. When the sound of the vicious steel trap jaws snapped shut, KG emerged in his flannel cap and wear pajamas and proclaimed, Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Ah yes, very memorable. A veritable cabin boy floor show. Good times, good times. And then there was the time Tidwell and Stedman arrived after many hours of driving in the Bling Mobile. That was sure some fancy ass rental car to be bouncing around the main Northwoods logging roads in. At least they remembered to bring extra gas, and KG had the foresight to bring along a tire repair kit. Even Pathworker watched as KG put his hard earned African safari knowledge to good work and repaired the inevitable flat tire that they got on the trip. It is rare when the Pathwalker learns something new about the North Woods. Usually he is the utter personification of North Woods wisdom. Oh you think so, do you? He did not look so wise that year when his fan belt went just north of Mill Enoch at Tantillo had to give him and his dogs a ride to camp, while Andy's truck was being repaired. It seems like our hunting vehicles are always breaking down in the North Woods. Perhaps it is some sort of Northwoods demon curse. I'll tell you who was cursed. Joshua's boy in Spaniel Stella, that is who was cursed. That damn dog came to grouse camp, and then stopped eating. Oh, I remember that camp well. That was when Stella coughed up Josh's kid's sock that she had eaten back home in Washington, D.C. Typical rookie grouse dog mistake. Only problem was the second sock Stella ate and could not cough up. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on Stella. That's right, I nearly forgot. Josh and Pete had to go all the way to Millinocca to find either a veterinarian or a Catholic priest to exorcise the demon from the boykin's belly. When that failed, our benevolent boykin heroes went all the way to Bangor to locate a sock exorcist. It was a successful exorcism, and I believe that Josh subsequently converted to Catholicism as a token of gratitude to the Red Gods. I have to say, Northwoods demons are extremely difficult to combat. Indeed. Speaking of Northwoods demons, did Stedman ever explain where he went for three hours that one night? You know, after Tantillo got cheeky again, and Rich could not find his shooting journal to throw at Jim. No explanation was ever offered. I myself like to believe that Rich was kidnapped by extraterrestrials. I have no scientific proof for my belief, however. Simply a hunch. Alien abduction is certainly a plausible enough explanation for what happened to Rich that night. But I prefer to believe that Tantillo was the real demon in this instance. Agreed. That Tantillo can be such an asshole sometimes. Indeed. Once again, it sounds like it is time for dinner. I sure hope Pathworker has brought along some jellied moose nose, or some pickled white-tailed testicles, or any one of his other backwoods brint specialties. 
Pat Walker is certainly a master of full utilization of the resource, I'd say. Indeed. He uses every part of the grouse except the flesh. And every part of the cock except the beak. Indeed. 